Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the Home Groove. Once again, I am here with you, Paul Renner. We will continue our conversation today about children and the internet. We have been having so much fun talking about this. And of course, mom and dad are with me today. Hey, son. Hi, dad. Hi, Paul. Hi. Hi, Home Group. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to say that yesterday was Christmas, and I hope that you had a wonderful time. And now it's time for you to get ready for New Year's. And I asked Denise just before we got started, do you have any family traditions that you ate when you were growing up as a child for New Year's? And it was the same as our house. Really? We had black-eyed peas and ham. We had black-eyed peas and ham. I don't know where in the world that tradition came from. (laughs) I don't either. And Daddy would usually warm peanuts. Well, we did that too. Roasted peanuts. But you know, New Year's is a great time for you to review this year. In fact, really, you should go to Sparkling Gems Volume 2 and read the last couple days. And it will help you prepare for the new year. To look at what you did well, to look at what you could have done better, and to make New Year's commitments. There's nothing wrong with New Year's commitments. Some people say, oh, I don't do that anymore. I've made so many commitments I've never kept. Well, that doesn't mean that you stop making commitments. You repent. And you say, Lord, I'm sorry that what you told me to do. And that's an important point. Don't just make up commitments. Ask the Lord, what do you want me to accomplish in the new year? Write it down. In our church staff, Paul, tell them what we do. (laughs) During our uh, staff Christmas party, we actually fill out on a piece of paper our prayer requests for the next year. What we believe that God has told us about the next year. Put it in an envelope, we pray for them, and then the bookkeepers, who are always good at hiding things, uh, they keep them until the next Christmas party. And then at the next Christmas party, they're all signed, they have people's names on it, we hand out these envelopes and everyone opens up and reads what their prayer request was for the last year. And it's funny because you hear oohs and disappointment, you hear <laughs> great joy. And someone will say, I want to share a testimony. This is amazing. I forgot I wrote it down, but the Lord did this for the, me this year. Oh. And, uh, and those are always special moments. But it's a good way to set a goal for the next year. And don't set the goal so big that you can't attain it. Set, ask the Lord to help you, and He will give you attainable goals that you can achieve in your life during 2017. So I just want to encourage you to do that. And spend time with friends and family on New Year's. You know, it's great to, to enter the new year with believers in a spirit of prayer and praise and just thanking God for what He's done and for what he's going to do. Really want to encourage you to do that. But we need to get back to our subject. Back to our subject. Now we've talked about a wide range of things. Like, for instance, teaching your children that not everything they see on the internet is true. Like uh, blue watermelons. They don't exist, but someone says that they sell them in Japan. Or uh, little pills that make you smart. Uh, Also, only adults who have life experience know that Such things don't exist. But Paul, I want to say something. Yes. The internet is not evil. The internet itself is neutral. A car is not evil. Yes. But how you operate a car can kill your life. Or bring amazing benefit. Or bring great benefit. Can you imagine life without cars? It would be very difficult. And in the same way, the internet itself is not evil. It's how you use the internet. For example, right now we're building IGNC, which is the Internet Good News Church. Mm -hmm. And it is church on the Internet. And it's church that is going to places all over Russia. Russia has 37,000 villages. Without a church. Without a church. Mm -hmm. Well, Internet is not the best choice, but if you don't have a church at all, if you have no option... Internet is an awesome option. That's right. And people are clicking on by the thousands. 12,500 people right now are clicking on every week to watch our Internet church. 
Mm-hmm. That's a lot of people. It's wonderful. And our intention is to grow that to 100,000 people, and I want to become the pastor to those 100,000 people. And that's our goal that we're working on. That's our biggest goal in front of us right now. That's correct. And so the Internet can be used in a tremendous way. We have a prayer wall here in Russia where we receive thousands of prayer requests. People talking to us through the Internet who don't have anybody else to talk to. And so it can be used in a good way. And I just think it's important that we make that point. I agree. But let's use the analogy of a car again. Uh, We don't give our children keys to the car when they say, Papa, I want to drive. That's correct. And even as adults, when we get in our car, we have stoplights and we have lines on the roads and we have all kinds of yield signs that tell us how we should act when we're on the road. And when we follow these guidelines, the car is an amazing thing. But it's when someone who gets in the car drunk or who crosses a red or doesn't stop at a red li- at a red light begins to you begin to wonder whether a car brings benefit at all because someone died. It's similar to the internet. The internet itself is neutral. It's how you use it that makes a difference. And just like there are, I'll call them internet missionaries, people out there with excellent intentions. They're doing what God told them to do. I really like that term. It's a wonderful, wonderful term. Oh, that's an awesome way to reach people. And they're doing what the Lord has told them to do out there, reaching people. And they have results, and they've got testimonies, and there are changed lives. Uh, a lot of wonderful ministries out there that focus on their work through the Internet. But there are more people out there with evil intentions. And Can I, can I just give a testimony? Yes. Our Internet page has grown so fast that right now it is growing 10,000 people a week. That's fast. And we just started an internet page for France. And in France, in a year, we've grown to 130,000 people on our page. Well, that's 130,000 people that God has given me the ability to speak to every day. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that ability a year ago. But we're using it correctly. And if you use it correctly, it is a great benefit. Yes. But you can just sit around and just waste hours on the internet. Just scrolling, 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 looking at news feeds. I mean, just waste hours when you could be doing something else. Get to it, do what you're going to do, and get off of it. I discovered that for myself, social networks, and even YouTube, for me, have become what I call... A time vacuum. You you start, and then all of a sudden, two hours later, where did those two hours go? And how did I benefit from those two hours? And what did I miss out on while I was looking at my phone? What was it that my my wife asked me to do? And what did my child come and say that his you know classmate in school told him? I missed it. Something important was going on. And I miss, and it's not because the internet itself is evil. It's because I misused the internet. And so what I'd really like to talk about today is setting boundaries, using self-control. And we're we're talking about all of this because we love our kids. And the name of our program is Kids and the Internet. But if we don't use self-control as parents, then we can't teach our children to use self-control. If we don't teach our kids to look each other in the eye while they talk instead of looking at their phone while they talk... I think it's rude. It's awful. I think it's rude to be typing or texting and talking at the same time. It's, you just teach your children to respect others and to not miss out on the people that are right next to them, the most important relationships they have. Mom, I think you wanted to say well, something. Well, I, I even saw in a news program, I mean, it's sad that it's come to this, but parents, they were having their children, because their children were on the Internet the whole time that they were having dinner, that they they had a rule that the telephone goes into a little, a little like a garbage bag or something during dinner. That's a good rule. And that's a good rule, but when I heard it, I thought, how terrible, how terrible that we come to a, 
pl a place where we can't sit down and have dinner with people. But, the, but that is parents being proactive. Yes. They're setting boundaries. They're setting boundaries, and that's a very good idea. That's very good. Uh, another family that I know, they've got a lot of kids. A lot of kids. Uh, uh, a lot, a lot like they, they have... Uh, Oh, what's the word in English uh, when you take an orphan in? Adopted. Thank oh. you. Thank you. Adopted. They have adopted uh, many, many children. At this point, I think they have 32 kids, although living with them uh, is probably 12 right now. Uh, they have a rule. They have a rule. When it's time to go to bed, all of the phones go in a box. That's perfect. It's awesome. These parents are exercising their authority and helping their children to not become addicted or do something that they shouldn't past hours. It's all the phones that go in a box. And they've got this box with all these cords and everybody just plugs their phones in at night and everybody knows after it's time to go to bed, there's no phones involved. So it's, I should use that rule. <laughs> it's a great rule. <clears throat> so, uh, 2 Timothy 1.7. One, I almost said 17 again. Seven, Second Timothy 1, 7. <clears throat> For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Sound mind. That's what we're going to talk about today. The <clears throat> ability to control what goes on in your mind. And if you're saved and if your children are saved, they also have... <laughs> Not a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit <clears throat> is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperness. Temperness is the Greek word in kratea, which means self-control, or the ability to control your own desires to or urges. To be the power of yourself. To be in power of yourself. To be in control of yourself. That's a fruit of the Spirit. And if you're walking with the Lord, and if, if you're spending time with Him, then one of, the, one of the things that should be seen in your life or that you should, you should discover in yourself is the ability to exercise self-control. If your children are saved, then also the Lord has given them the ability to exercise self-control. But... Our children don't know how to do that. They've got a lot of urges, temptations, emotions that they're trying to deal with. And so as parents, we have to teach them how to control that. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance. Temperance here is the same Greek word that we find in Galatians, self-control. The ability to control or have inner power to control what's going on in your life. To say no. You can teach your children to say no. Actually, the book of Proverbs says that the person who has ability over his own spirit is stronger than he that can take a city. That's right. Proverbs, Proverbs 16, 16, 32. 32. <laughs> <laughs> he that is slow. Then we all three have that verse. Well, I knew that verse. It's in my notes. Yeah. Proverbs sixteen thirty two. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit is better than he that taketh a city. Uh, <clears throat> this is a very mm. interesting verse because the person that is, uh, what does it say, mighty, and the person that taketh a city. Those are the people that we get to see. Those are the people on television. Those are the people that seem popular. The people that are mighty. The people that are strong. The people that you think, wow, I wish I could be like that person. No one says, I wish I could be like the long-suffering person. Some say that's weakness. Hmm. But in the Bible, it's, the, it's, it's opposite. The person that is long-suffering, the person that can control his own spirit, we say that in the kingdom of God, it's opposite. Yeah. And and those that's the value system that we're supposed to attain to. And it's what we need to teach our kids. It's it's those secret things that are going on in our inner life that 
or bringing us victory or bringing us defeat. But like nobody's going to stand up and applaud you because you kept your mouth shut instead of, you know, running your mouth and putting somebody down, gossiping or reacting to what somebody else said to you that you didn't like. Actually, a mature person will applaud that. Someone who exercises that will recognize that. But and, and will appreciate it. Yeah, they just might not applaud it right then. You just might not get your applause right then because it's an inner, it's an inner life. Mm -hmm. And that inner life is what really matters because what's on the inside is going to come out on the outside. And those decisions that we're making in those hard moments, whether to be a part of this gossip or to tell somebody what you really think or just to keep your bitterness nobody will know or some secret habit or something like that. That's all on the inside. And God sees the heart, absolutely every part of it. It's totally exposed to him. And, and so we can work with the Holy Spirit because he's given us power, like you were saying, Paul, about, about the spirit, the fruits of the spirit, because they're inside of us. And when we say, Lord, I want, I, you've got to help me here. And I choose right now. I choose, I choose, I choose, I choose, I choose your way. And, and that's when we're saying yes to the Holy Spirit. And it's, I mean, as I said before, all those inner things going on, somebody might not see or applaud. Not connect all that to the internet. But the Lord sees it. About. Because you make these decisions on the inside that you, as you've been talking about, Paul, that you were going to separate yourself from using the internet so much, wasting your time, uh, going to it for instant gratification. Instant gratification. Let's get back to instant gratification because it's that urge when you're lonely, you're sad, you're bored to take a selfie, post it online, and you get some likes, you feel better for a little while, and then you got to do it again, right? Mm -hmm. I have never taken a selfie. Well, you are just a lucky person. <laughs> but I don't take selfies, and I've told my children that they're not allowed to take selfies, but I have finished a bucket of ice cream just because it tasted so good, and I thought... It would help me so much. So it's not always a selfie. How did you feel after you ate the whole bucket of ice cream? Uh, it's usually in the morning when my stomach doesn't say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it may not just be selfies, right? It could be sweets. It could be uh, spending money. You can get in debt really easy that way. Or it could be gossiping. Because when you gossip, you feel real good about yourself because you're talking about other people and all of their, you know, how they're not the best people in the world. So this urge for instant gratification, it's everywhere. And some instant gratification is okay. If you press the brake on your car, you expect the car to stop. It would, that's the right thing. But not all instant gratification is good. Much of it is actually very bad for you. You need to learn to wait. Now, in order to learn to wait, and we've talked about uh, Proverbs 16, this person that controls himself is stronger than the person who... That's why I was talking about that, because of controlling yourself. Yes. So, a couple practical steps. First, watch for these urges. First thing that you can do, and this is already a huge victory, is if you recognize the moment. When you feel like, and we're going to say selfie again, but when you feel like you need to take another selfie, or when you feel like you need an ice cream, or when you feel like you want to spend some money, and now you can spend money online. Now that's also internet, right? We can teach our children that spending money online, getting in debt online, it's not going to help them. You know, they, they get that feel of instant gratification from spending the money, but then they have to wait for it to get delivered, you know, whatever it is they purchased. And then, you know, that, that doesn't work. You got to wait again. So you got to buy something else while you're waiting for that to show up. That's 
pretty messed up. You know, you do this and then all of a sudden you got to do it all over again. So number one is recognize the moment. And if you recognize the moment, that is already a huge victory. Number two, take a pause. Stop. Before you, you know, take your selfie or before you spend that money online, just pause and think about it. Do I need this? Is this beneficial? Why am I doing this? Teach your children. Ask your children these questions. You see them, they, they've got out their phone again. They're playing the game again. Or they've got another notification that says, you know, you forgot to play me, you know. What were those things called? The, the, those games that they used to have? You have to, you have to you def little toys you had to feed the cat or something. And you always had to pull it out and you had no. to feed it or you had to do it. The games are doing the same. I forgot what that thing was called. Um, but you know, you got these, 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 all these notifications that are coming from your game center or from these online games. Where are you? You know, you need to, you need to play me, play me, play me. So teach your kid when you see he's pulling out his phone again and say, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? What are you doing it for? Is that beneficial? Uh, what could you be doing besides that? Uh, what are you stealing from when you do that? Are you stealing from family dinner? Are you stealing from your home group? Actually, you have a relative who is completely... He has lost his entire life. He has no life outside of that computer game. screen, that game. He plays a game. And the game With is thousands of people. Thousands of other people. It's all happening in real time. And you've got friends there. And you can actually spend money there. But, you know, it's, it's a world of its own. And you just ask. So when you see your kids looking at all these notifications on their telephone, ask the question. What are you doing? Why are you doing it? What are you stealing from? You're stealing from something. From family dinner, from talking to the person who's sitting right next to you, from doing your homework. You're stealing from the information that you're supposed to be hearing in school or during a lecture. Uh, you're, you're missing something. You're making a choice to pay attention to this and ignore something else. So watch for the impulses, urges, take a pause, and ask some questions. And when you ask some questions, you may realize it's okay. This is good. This is beneficial. This is something I need to do. But you may not have a clear answer on whether it's good or not good. Maybe it's a maybe, or maybe it's a gray area for you. Or maybe you know on the inside that it's something you shouldn't be doing, but you are doing, and you found excuses for it. The next step is rejoice when you have a small victory. Let's say you have a very small victory, and sometimes these victories are very small. Like they only last a split second. Like, you went through that whole mental process, you thought about why you're doing it, whether you should do it or not, you had a really small pause, really small pause, and you decided not to take a selfie. But then all of a sudden, you felt like you had to do it again. And just as you're pulling your phone out, you decide to take another selfie, you, you know, or purchase something else online, or see what else is available there on your, on your uh, Facebook page, what else is going on. Uh, take a pause again and rejoice when you make the right decision. You know, Paul, that is, that is showing us, I mean, that's addictions, what you're talking about. Unfortunately, this would sound like something you would say to uh, an addicted person or some of their family members, steps to get out of addictions. It, it's, it's talking about addiction, and that's why this verse is so powerful, because making... Make, Which verse? Proverbs sixteen thirty two, that it doesn't seem powerful to the world that making these decisions that you're talking about. Would you read that verse one more time? He who is slow to anger is better than a sit, better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. So when we agree with the Holy Spirit and say, I'm going to. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. What's actually happening is that we're becoming powerful. Mm -hmm. That's good. If we're moved by addiction, 
we're not even in control. The thing that we're addicted to is in control. And it's moving us along. We're not moving it. It's moving us. But so, but God's given us the power that we can rule our own spirit. And that kind of a person who makes those decisions is a powerful person. Mm-hmm. And these are the kind of addictions that you can't really see come on you. When we were talking about the internet and everything out there, you Mm. You know, you just don't see it happen. And so, once again, wow. pray for you guys today to be careful. Careful as, as how you raise, as to how you raise your children, mm-hmm. and that the Spirit would lead you, and that the fruit of the Spirit, and like it says in Second Timothy, that God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, that those things, power, love, and a sound mind, that those things would rule in your heart. Wow. Can I just add one more thing? You're in teaching your children, Paul, you're actually giving them tools to become powerful. Mm-hmm. According to this verse. You just went past time. They're going to be powerful. Amen. It's time for us to go. It's been great to be together. And we pray that this has been a blessing to you. We have certainly enjoyed being together. Mm-hmm. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the control of the Holy Spirit that Paul has talked a lot about tonight and that you would help parents to discipline their children and themselves, especially in regard to the use of the Internet. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good to be with you. Bye-bye.